Hi, in our previous examples of the Fourier series, we have been dealing from the limits of minus pi to pi. We define a certain function, if you can recall our previous function that we defined, it went from minus pi to pi, and the function was, if I'm not wrong, from 0 to pi, it will be equal to 1, and from, two, if from minus pi to 0 is equal to 2. Okay, there, there's not a problem about that. We apply the Fourier coefficients integrating from minus pi to pi, and we get the Fourier series. Now, however, most functions are not like that. In fact, only a small minor, minority of functions that you deal in the certain chapter of Fourier analysis goes from minus pi to pi. Most of the functions we would be defined from an arbitrary unit uh, limit minus L to another one, which is L. And, and from this, we are told, or we need to find the Fourier series of, let's just say, a certain function can be anything which goes like that. So, obviously, the first coefficients that we define, the Fourier coefficients that we defined in the previous video, does not apply because the function is, not, is now integrable from minus L to L and not from minus pi to pi, pi. If you recall the derivations, we were always integrating from minus pi to pi, and that is how we worked out the Fourier coefficients, and hence get the Fourier series. However, going from the limits of minus pi to pi to minus L to L isn't too difficult. All we need to do is to employ a substitution like how, you know, when we integrate, we integrate via a substitution. And I will show it to you now. It's actually a very simple process. A very simple process and a very fundamental process that we will use in our subsequent lessons. So, let's just deal with one of the Fourier coefficients, shall we? Which is A0 is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi integrating from minus pi to pi of F of x, um, dx. Okay, that is the first coefficient, um, the first Fourier coefficient that we're going to deal with. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to define another variable which is t equals to pi x divided by l. Now, we can rewrite that as x is equals to t multiplied by l divided by pi. I hope you can see that. And, you know, um, x will be defined from minus l to l and t will be defined from minus pi to pi. Right. So that is the change in variable, change in variable that we have. We define a new variable t, and what we're going to try to do is that we're going to translate this function and change the limits from minus pi, minus, from minus pi to pi to minus l to l. Uh, we now define another function g t. A function g in terms of t is that equal to a function f in terms of x. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go from the function g t to the function of x. Because in doing so, the limits of x will now be minus l to l. Okay, so the first Fourier uh, coefficient is from uh, is a naught. Okay, and integrating from minus pi to pi. This time, because of the new function that I've defined, I will need to integrate this uh, the function g in terms of g in terms of t with respect to t. Now this is perfectly fine because as you can notice that t is from minus pi to pi. So I'm integrating with respect to t minus pi to pi. That is fine. Now what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to I'll make the integration by substitution. Now, how I'm going to do that is that I'm going to change the limits to obey this one over here. Uh, okay, what does that say? Well, this says that if t is equal to minus pi, x is going to be equal to minus l. Just substitute minus pi inside here. And if t is equal to pi, x is going to be equal to l. There's no surprise about that. So, this is going to be 2 pi, 1 divided by 2 pi. I'm going to integrate from minus l to l. I'm going to still stick with the gt. However, I will rewrite the, the dt um, like this, dx, sorry, dt dx, yeah, dt dx, dt dx, dx. I hope you can see that. As though the dx cancels out because this is going to be, it's fundamentally equal to this. It's a certain integration by substitution way of writing things. Okay, but what's dt dx? Well, dt dx, I can simply by differentiating that. So dt dx is going to be, is going to give me pi divided by l. Okay, now pi divided by L, so this is going to be pi divided by L. I will bring that one outside. Um, pi, we cancel out with this, it will be 1 divided by 2L, integrate minus L to L. And since now I'm integrating with respect to X, I will just simply change the function GT to the function FX by the relationship that I define, and this is what I have, as easy as that. So, now our new Fourier coefficient A0 is equal to 1 divided by 2L, integrate from minus L to L. Likewise, we can write a n is equals to 1 divided by l integrate minus l to l. So I've got a function fx, and this time, function cosine is going to be n pi x divided by l. Okay, it took me a while there, 
because I I, I kind of uh, need to remember it. Okay, now how, how do I get this? Well, simply it's cosine uh, tx, right? Cosine tx, and then t is going to be equal to this. So we're just going to substitute this one inside over here, which is what we did. And this is the Fourier coefficient a n and b n is going to be one divided by l integrate minus l l function f x sine n pi x l x dx. And there we go. Going from the, the limits of minus pi to pi to minus l to l, and this our these are Fourier coefficients, which is this, this, and this. Simply, you know, using the change in variable, which is t uh, equals to pi um, times x divided by l. Now the, the Fourier series is going to be a naught plus this one. Okay, a naught summation summation n is equals to one to infinity of this, and then I will times by a cosine um, n pi x. Because remember, I still need to substitute change the variables of the Fourier series. Now, what better way to illustrate that than a simple example which I will quickly go through right now.